So the five and a half minutes to play. Oh, hey, gets oh. back in the action. Nine second differential. Purcell drives, she's got it. Brittany Sykes now, long range, gets the lucky roll. Welcome to Townsville for some Friday night hoops as the Fire prepare to host the Perth Lynx in the first of two games between these sides. Perth need to win to protect top position on the WNBL table whilst the Fire look to finish their season with a bang. Liam Ellison here alongside seven-time WNBL championship winning coach Carrie Graff. Carrie, welcome. It should be a high-energy contest tonight. Great to be here, Liam, and absolutely right. The fire, can I say it, C could, they, could they catch fire tonight? But we know one thing for sure, the Perth Lynx can catch fire. They are a star-studded lineup that can shoot the lights out. They certainly are. The Lynx top of the table at the moment, and remarkably, this is the, just the first matchup of the season between these two teams at this very late stage. Let's have a look at the Townsville Fire lineup on your screens right now. Of course, missing a few players today, Carrie. That they are, and, and tough for them. You know, they've, they've played the last few games, minus three of their key players, three starters, two imports out, Lauren Nicholson, their Opals player out, and now they've got Nadine Payne, who just played her 250 games with the hip injury. So to play, you know, to, to finish out your season with four years starting five, it's pretty tough. But this is a young team that provides opportunity for, for some of their development players to get a shot. So they'll be out there playing for contracts and playing hard to show the coach what they can do. Certainly missing four of five starters tonight. The five, of course, Monique Billings returned to the USA not too long ago to rehab her knee injury. She was fantastic before going down 16 points and seven boards a game. But let's talk about some of those players we might see in the absence of the stars. Of course, Courtney Woods has stepped into the starting lineup recently. It's been really good. She has, Liam. And she finds a way to score. She gets in the lane. She makes great finishes. She's an exceptional free throw shooter and a fantastic three-point shooter. They'll need her to make shots tonight. Um, you know, I think we'll see McSpadden play a fair bit tonight. She'll have a big matchup against Garvin, potentially, who, you know, she Garvin's played for Towns the last few years, so McSpadden will have some experience against her at practice. Um, you know, there, there's some good matchups for, for Townsville. Zatina Recuso, I'm sure, will get the task on, on Scherf. Um, and young development players might get a chance to play tonight. It'll be really interesting to see if they hit the floor, what they can do. Shannon Seabom did flag that during the week that we would see some extended minutes from the development players. So that will be exciting, of course. Steph Breed as well. Let's talk about her just quickly. Sitting fourth in the WNBL in assists at the moment, having a career year in the absence of Nicholson and Sutton. Yeah, she is. Look, she's been impressive. You know, she's a dogged defender. Again, she's playing super well off the off the pick and roll. Um, she finds ways to get to the lane. She's an exceptional free throw shooter. I think she's up around 90%. She's key for them tonight. She's got to be able to put score on the board, as does as does Woods, if there are any chance to create some sort of crazy upset here tonight. Let's flip over to the Perth Lynx side of things at the moment. And after the Capitals, somewhat shock 31-point loss to the Lightning last night. The Lynx have now leapt back up to first on the standings. No Alex Cibatoni tonight, who remains in Perth in health and safety protocols. But other than that, carry full strength. And the, the, the Perth Lynx, theoretically, should be roaring here. They should. I mean, having look, they're an absolutely star-studded starting five. I mean, they're, they're backcourt in Whitcomb, Mabry and Young can just light it up at a touch from deep range you know young's got the you know the best mid-range jumper in the in the in the competition at the moment and then they've got a front court with garvin and scherf so they've they can score inside and out they can score quickly um they're tough you know they've got sharp sharp coming off the bench that's a great offensive rebounder I think the thing for them is they've played six, this will be their sixth game in 11 days. So they've had a heavy schedule, um, but they're, they're going to be, you know, playing finals basketball. They want to maintain that top spot, get a win tonight, get a win Sunday. So they've got home court advantage come those semifinals starting next week. Very, very valuable home court advantage, especially over there in the West. So tough to travel to Perth there and win in the finals, of course. Spoke about the condensed schedule. Their last game was just two nights ago, the Lynx. They defeated the Sydney Uni Flames at Brighton Stadium 84 to 72 behind 40 combined points from Young and Wickham. They've been unreal as we spoke about. What do you reckon? Tips tonight, Carrie? I mean, the Lynx come in favourites, do you think? Yeah, look, I mean, they've got it. Just just with the, their sheer talent and with the depleted Townsville side. So you, you've got to say it's going to be tough for Townsville, but they are at home. They've got absolutely nothing to lose. 
And, you know, when, I, when I've said, you know, I'm, you know, upset tonight, it's going to be tough, the last game I called, I, there was no way I thought the Sydney Flames would beat the Lynx, and they did. So, look, the great thing about the WNBL right now, anything can happen. Anyone literally can beat anyone. And we're seeing some margins, as you said, that are unexpected. So who knows what will happen tonight? It, we're in for a hell of a game. Absolutely. Anyone can get anyone on even, any given night. The Fire, undermanned, five-game losing streak, but they're here in front of their home fans. They'll be pumped, no doubt about it. Of course, the Fire donning their Indigenous round jersey tonight. Fantastic to see. Rounds 12 to 15 have been earmarked to honour the occasion, and the Fire will do it in front of their home crowd. You can see the beautiful design right there on screen just moments ago. So wonderful to see them wearing those jerseys as well. Yeah, it is. Many of the obviously the teams, all different teams have been wearing their various Indigenous strips at various times and, and some teams playing the season out in them, which is a, a great thing to see the league and, and teams taking on. So Akuzo and Scherf to contest the tip here. Looks to be another good crowd in Townsville tonight. Always get good support up there in the north. Here we go. Akuzo wins the first tip to Murray, who just... Sleeps on the first possession, so Perth with the ball. Lucky not to get an injury there, I think, but perhaps a bit sticky. And in fact, they will come out and clean that up, Carry, yes. Sticky, slippery, maybe both. So we'll get that sorted out. Garvin will inbound, and you can hear the Townsville crowd in the background. High energy here. The cowbells will be out, you'd think. The, the floor sweeper could well be a future Townsville Fire athlete by the look of her. You never know. Great to see the juniors involved in the floor sweeping throughout all the organisations around the league. And Whitcomb and Reid get tangled up. First personal on Reid. That's going to be a good matchup. Reid on Whitcomb. You know, dogged defender is Reed. Again, we see Reed too. Bit grippy on the floor. It might be the decals or perhaps the weather or something, but clearly there's an issue for the athletes with the floor at the moment. Akuzo having a go as well now. She can sweep as well. <laughs> so hopefully get that sorted in no time. Of course, some news around the basketball world. The Opal's fixture for the World Cup came out. We'll speak a little bit more about that later, but condensed schedules, five games in six days carry, so that's going to be big for them. It's a bit like Perth's schedule recently. Absolutely. Well, this lady might be a part of it as well come September, Darcy Garbin. He's the Opal's captain as well, Whitcomb, Scherf. Hands it off to Young. To Scherf and Akuzo. Working down low, the hook shot, not that time, but second chance for Mabry, run out of real estate. I like to, that, that battle down low is going to be an interesting one. The Cuso v Scherf backing down each other, that, that's going to be one to watch. Scherf having a good year, 10 rebounds a game for the Lynx. As Reed mid-range J, no good. Young mishandles the rebound, fire with a second chance. Both teams running pretty good execution at the moment, looking at some ball screen action, which we'll see a load of tonight. Can't just get the shot to drop. Reed inbounds to Cox. Reed gets her floater up, but Scherf pulls it down. Whitcomb hands it over to Garvin. Here's Mabry still working her way back from that ankle injury. Great to see her back out there. Whitcomb tries to reward Garvin with defence from Townsville. Exceptional defence, the first two, to get some decent stops. They're, they're keeping keeping um, Perth in, in front of them, not letting him get past and break him down and try, trying to find shooters. As we see, Woods, little pull-up, Jay, at the free-throw line. Good start for Townsville. There's the first bucket. I think that's what Townsville need. The last few games, you know, they've been executing offense pretty well, but they haven't been able to get the shots to drop. If they can do that, it'll help build a little confidence and they can really dig in defensively and see if they can lock this star-studded team. As we see, Scherf launch it for three. She can shoot it. You know, 6-5, but boy, she's got a great three-point shot. Has shown that throughout the season, the range she can step out. So here's Cox. 
Over to Mia Murray for three. Not that time. Akuzo follows the miss. Keeps it in. Garvin did just enough. See Scherf. Mabry driving on Cox. Takes advantage. She just finds a way to finish. Mabry poised. Finds some body. Gets some space. Excellent finish. So Murray from the top. Hands it off to her point guard. And Reed. Has Whitcomb defending her. Comes around the screen and gets to drop. Smart place there for Reed. She's seeing there the, the, the Perth bigs are, are dropping off that, that ball screen. She's just going in there, poised. Shoots a mid-range, Jay. Excellent counter to the ball screen defense from the Lynx. Scherf tried to reward Young. Cox stops her in her tracks. Now inbounds, turnover. Reed. Trying to link up with Akuzo. Now she comes with the screen. Cut into the hoop. Count the bucket and one. That's all Steph Reed. She's just playing with that ball screen right now. As I said, the Perth Bigs are dropping off that. She's taking her time, trying to trying to toy with them. As we see here, gives a little up fake straight into Akuso, Akuso who draws the and one. Wouldn't be surprised to see. Perhaps the Perth Lynx change their ball screen defense on Steph Reed if she continues to do that. Shoot the pull up, dump it inside to Akuso. Akuso on the three throws, good. So now Mabry. Defended by Woods. Hands it over to Whitcomb. Young there, this is her range from the three throw line, not that time. Reed, baseball pass ahead. What a dime to Cox. At home, they like to run this Townsville, full -time, Townsville fire team. And defensively, they're getting the job done. Perth Lynx are not getting any open looks. Everything is contested. Everything's under duress. As we see a block by Akuso on Garbin. Right there on cue. Townsville fire showing their wares. Whitcomb couldn't convert on the lay-in. Reed will push the issue once again. In fact, she'll back it out to Akuzo. Woods, pump fake, drives baseline. One fake, two fake, it drops in for the fire. Tough play, Courtney Woods. Good start for Woods as Akuzo comes up over with the double team. Forces the travel. Tough D. I've got to say, Townsville Fire's defense is impressive. They've got pressure on the ball. No, no, every shot is contested. Doubling, doubling down at different at different points. They're making it tough for Perth right now. Perth can can get a light if they've got open looks. They're not getting um, the ball rotated through hands. It's been super to see Townsville start it like this for a team like Perth that like to get out, um, get out and score quick in the first quarter. Shannon Seabomb would be pleased. His team up to the task here at home, as with the fire crowd so far. Here's Woods. Akuzo and Garvin in the post. Akuzo makes a move. Nice little isolation play down low. See if she can beat her man one on one, which she did. Whitcomb off the window for two. Makes it look easy to Sammy Whitcomb. She sure does. Another great game in her last outing against Sydney. 23 points. Cox. Driving left on Garbin. Just what the fire need. They need contributions from, from all of their players, and particularly a veteran like Cox, who's got to step up and play many more minutes than, than normal. And she can, you know, she's a legit player. She was a grand final MVP not too many years ago. Certainly was the, of course, now game's leading hot record holder for this Townsville team. Whitcomb making it look easy as she does. Always a danger trying to defend this Perth Lynx team. Which one of their backcourt are going to light it up quickly? It seems like Sammy Whitcomb's going to, has got the hot hand early. They're going to make sure they lock her down. Woods. Bakuzo with the screen. Now Woods off the glass. She's so poised. Really showing her wares over the last three games. 24-year-old getting her opportunity here in the WNBL. Young. Now she fires from the elbow. Scherf on the O-glass and Woods just ripped it out of her arms. Reed assessing her options for Townsville. Woods is stripped of it. Young ahead of the play and Mabry's there. 
cleans it up. Looking for that response now, the fire. Cox over to Reed. Miscommunication, Murray wasn't prepared for it. Big offensive play here for Perth. Just get him settled back into this. As Young misses on the pull-up too. Shooting 50% from the field this season, Young. Stepping back for three, not that time. This is where Perth are dangerous. On the, on the break transition, but well defended by Townsville. Although Scherf launches the three, short with it. So he couldn't convert on that occasion. Reed will slow things up. Hand off to Cox. The fire flipping it round the perimeter. Now Reed works inside the paint. Cox, baseline J. Young pulls it down for Perth. Good execution against by, by Townsville. Getting good looks. Can't knock him down as Young goes to work inside the Scherf. Nice little turnaround. So timeout on the floor. The Lynx cut it back to a four-point ball game. 17 to 13, the Fire lead. But so far, really, we've been singing the praises of the Townsville Fire who have come to play. That they have, Liam. And I think, look, it's a defensive effort that I've been, been impressed with. Nothing, I mean, other than a couple of breakaway laps off steals, but the quarter court defence has been impressive. Making plays shoot over a hand, getting in on, on offensive boards, they've done, it, done an exceptional job. To hold a team like the Perth Lynx to 13 in a quarter is an exceptional defensive effort. And 14 points in the paint already as well for Townsville. Feels like they've sort of got their penetration every time they've wanted it. They have, and, and the, the poise we see by Steph Reed and Courtney Woods, when they get in the lane, they're not in a hurry. They just they, they toy with the defence, bring someone to them, make a dump, find a little mid-range jumper. They've been impressive offensively. And the shots that they've missed have been good shots. They, I think they're executing their offence exceptionally well. Ryan Petrick chatting things over with his Perth Lynx team. They'll remain calm here at this early stage. Scherf leading the way with five points for the Lynx. For the fire, it's Courtney Woods with six points and two steals as well already for Townsville. Of course, some more news around the league. Perth have had their final game cancelled against the Bendigo Spirits. They will finish on 16 games, as will the Bendigo Spirit. Be interesting to see here. If we see any change of defence by the Perth Lynx, if they change anything up on their ball screen defence in particular, I think that's where Townsville's hurt them a little bit, where Reed's got in the lane and been able to make some easy decisions. Um, of course, a team like this don't panic. You know, I've got to say, it's very interesting that a player that's as talented um, and with the scoring punch he has as, as young, that she's yet to get on the scoreboard. So here we go. Cox over to Murray. Hand off to Reed. Sharps out there now for Perth. In and out. Now she gets her shot away. So Eisenbarger pulls it down for Perth. Burrows as well off the pine. Scherf inside to Eisenbarger, who's got front position. Nice little high-low play between the, the two bigs there. Interesting that Coach Petrick is coming with some of his younger players this early in the game when they're down, but he's clearly got faith in them. And as we saw them go to work down low. Woods over to McSpadden. Back to a one possession ball game after the league got out to eight at one stage. Falls home for Townsville. McSpadden, nice little dump inside and McSpadden finishes just inside the elbow. They're executing that, that mid ball screen really well. Assist number three already for Steph Reed. Murray with a screen. Reed again. Makes her move, not that time. 90 seconds to go here in the first period. Sharp. Here's Young. You know, preferred mid-range. Rattles out. Sharp crashing the glass. Stays with the Lynx. Boy, she's an exceptional offensive rebounder, Alex Sharp. She's in the in the top ten for offensive boards in the in the competition. As we see here, Young, little hesitation, pull up Jay. Rattles out, but Sharp would be a hell of an Aussie rules football player with a leap like that. Certainly. Young takes a break, as will Mia Murray. 
And look, Coach Patrick, I think here is, you know, he, he knows the amount of games his team have played, six games in 11 days. Perhaps he's looking to get his, his youth in early so that coming home down the stretch, he's got his, all, his, all his starters trying to get some minutes out of their legs early in this game, regardless of the scoreboard at the moment. Mabry misses on the baseline too. Reed and Burrows, Akuzo comes with the screen. Ops it out. Here's Fabro, one of the development players, and through the legs of Akuzo. Perth the other way. Mabry hesitates. Good defense from Townsville. Absolutely. Nothing easy again for the Perth Lynx. They've got to fight for every shot. Reed. Into the paint. Looked for the handoff. No good. So now they've got numbers if they go quick. Reed gets back there, and Mabry with the floater. Scherf's there to clean it up and missing. Now the fire, Woods. Shot clock still ahead of the game clock. Is Fabro. Single digits to work with, Woods. Mid-range two, no. So here we go, nine seconds to go. Perth trail by four. Mabry will step back into a deep triple. So that will do it for the end of one. The Townsville Fire 19 lead the Perth Lynx 15 here at the Townsville Stadium. Welcome back to Townsville Stadium. It's the fire leading here by four points. Liam Ellison here alongside Carrie Graff. And we saw during the break some pictures from the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup, of course, beginning in September 22nd to the 1st of October. The draw for the Opals has just been released. Of course, sign up for first access to tickets at Women's World Cup. Dot basketball. So, look, always a condensed schedule during a tournament carry, but look, five games in six days, is that an all something that'll be on their radar? That, I mean, five games in six days, that's tough. I mean, generally you get some rest days between, but that is a tough schedule. But, you know, you've got, you got 12, 12 players, the coaches will play smart and rotate people through, but it's a, it's a hell of a tough schedule. Starts off on the 22nd, 8.30pm at the Sydney Superdome, Australia take on France. So, That'll be a blockbuster, two world-class teams right there. And it doesn't get any easier in their group, the Opals, either. No, it doesn't. I mean, it, it's, a, it's, look, it's world-class basketball, top 12 te teams in the world. You're going to have tough games no matter, you know, who's in your pool or not, and then you cross over to quarterfinals. It's tournament play at that level is tough. It's going to be fun to have it on home shores. First time since 94 as Ree, the mid-range Jay. Boy, she's having a night out tonight so far. Her execution on that ball screen offensively is superb. Another good game for Reed. She's really been up to the challenge. Stepping into the starting lineup as Garvin gets one back for Perth. You know, I think that's the difference so far in this game. I mean, the, the field goal percentage, Townsville is shooting it at 63%, which is, you know, a confidence building for them that they're executing and being able to drop the shots. As we see Reed again off that mid ball screen, toying with the defenders. Inside to Akuzo with a hook shot. Nice spread of scorers for Townsville too. Akuso's doing a great job in there, getting a defender on her back and just wheeling and dealing with her post moves. As you see, Sharp with the, or Mabry, sorry, with the hesitation. And again, makes it look easy. 
So Mabry now up to six in the ball game. Had a bit of a quieter outing last game against the Flames. There's McSpadden now the other way. Reed and Whitcomb. Bacuzo to provide the screen. Now she makes her move left. Good defense, Perth. Alex Sharp pushing the issue. Hands it off to Eisenbarger, cutting to the hoop. No. Steph Reed will just get him a good execution here, slow it up a little bit, make Perth defend him. Some staggered screen action. And back to that mid-ball pick that's being so effective for him as Woods takes it to the lane, finds the bucket and draws the foul. Boy, she just finds a way. That's talent. She's having another good opening start to this game. Courtney Woods, eight points now, four of five shooting. Efficient. And look, she doesn't, she's not overly athletic. I mean, with all due respect to her, she's a hell of a player, but she's not overly athletic, but she makes it with the tempo that she plays at. She just suckers defenders in, draws them in, keeps composure, can't finish with the free throw, which is uncharacteristic for her. She's an excellent free throw shooter. Commentator's curse strikes again. Here's Whitcomb. Garvin hands it back to Whitcomb. Straight away she fires sharp. Diving in there as she does, but it's Townsville ball. You know, again, I mean, Sammy Wickham's, you know, unbelievable three-point shooter, but they're not getting wide-open looks. You know, that's a, a, a kickback, step-back three-point shot for her, but she's still got a defender with a hand in her face. Townsville doing a great job at making every shot that the Lynx get be contested. Eisenberger, what a pass to Wickham, who finishes it off. Nicely placed bounce pass. So back to four for Perth. Seabom and Woods chat things over. You know, the breaks where, where the Lynx have been able to get a little bit of score, scoreboard pressure off. They're getting, you know, a couple of steals and, and keeping that, that margin tight. But in the quarter court, the, the defense that the Townsville Fire are applying has been exceptional. So Reed general in the offense for Townsville is Michaela Cox. McSpadden. Akuzo will be assessed with the moving screen. I think so. So Perth ball. Once again, Reed right up in the grill of Whitcomb. Mabry. Now Garvin from the top lets it fly. Reed with a rebound. Woods has mishandled it. Now Mabry drawing contact. Smart play, Mabry. She suckered that foul. Woods chatting things over with a referee. That's her first personal. McSpadden takes a break. Jackie Young as well back into the ball game. Petrick going back with his, you know, I, I think, you know, clearly he, he was looking to rest his, his key players early in the game to make sure he can come home strong with them. As you say, inject them back in and see if a little time sitting down, they can come back in and, and light it up. Emma Clark as well, getting her first minutes of the evening. Hands it back to Whitcomb. Garvin moving it through some hands. Big screen from Sharp. And how about that for a pick and roll if you the Perth Lynx? Well executed. Coach Sebo might be happy with their rotation. Akuso a little slow to come across and close that one down but we see some ball screen action again with Reed spinning and sharp with the defense swats that shot she's traveled picked up her dribble and the pass wasn't there so Townsville with another opportunity here 14 to work with Woods Looking to inbound, here's Akuzo. 
Hands it off to Cox. Whitcomb's right there. Now Reed. She's got to go. Three seconds. Cox will fire for three. Contested. Oh, Michaela Cox. Towels waving on the Townsville bench. Just what the doctor ordered. They needed that one. Uh, look, I think Perth have adjusted their defence. They're, they're packing in a lot more when Steph Reed comes off that ball screen, but they kicked it out and found the open man, and Cox on the, on the shot clock buzzer nails that one. Something out of nothing. Now Wickham looks to return the favour and does just that. You can do that. I can do that too. <laughs> so fun to watch Sonny Wickham. Now Reed. Steps into an elbow, Jay. Plenty of space. Again, poised. Saw that big defender sitting off the ball screen again and just pulls up for the mid-range. Whitcomb. Now she drives baseline. Great defense from Murray. Reed will slow it up. Over to Murray. Now they whip it to the corner and Cox has got her off the dribble. Missing on the reverse. Good ball movement by Townsville. Thought Cox might have launched that one off the back of that last three. Clark over to Whitcomb. Let's see if she's got the hot hand. Garbin. Akuzo, good defense. Wasting no time on the fast break. He's Reed. Now she can fire Michaela Cox. Just rattles out. Neither team really lighting up from three point range at the moment. Getting some decent looks, but. As I say that, Sammy Whitcomb says, a little bit too long. Back iron on that occasion. Fire still nursing that three-point lead. Murray, she's got space to fire. Another collective sigh of relief, but Cox with a second chance. Steph Reed doing a great job of controlling the tempo for this Hounsville fight. You know, they're not looking to push too much, just execute, grind it down, and go to the well till the well runs dry. Let's run ball screen again until they make an adjustment. They haven't at all, and she continues to help her team ex execute and score off that mid ball screen. As you see, Jackie Young, boy oh boy, is she good at that. Jackie Young, that's her first bucket of the ball game. Reed's decision making really has been stellar all night long as we see some substitutions. Is that no look dime from Sammy Whitcomb? How about that from the veteran Cox as well? Cool. Step back three on the buzzer. Couldn't hit the wide open one in the corner, but makes a tough one with no time on the clock. Always the way. <laughs> Ganzini doing her best to deter Reed. Hands it back to Reed. McSpadden there. Now she's got the space to fire Reed. And her game continues. Ten points now, four assists. She said, you can tell they've worked on the, how to attack the, the ball screen, the way Perth are playing it, and they're just milking it right now. Gandini, wide open in the corner. That one falls for Perth, and back to a one-point ball game here at Townsville Stadium. Reed and Gandini. Courtney Woods as well has made her presence felt. McSpadden presenting. Now she provides the screen. Reed from the three throw line. Not that time. So Townsville gifted another opportunity. 0.8 on the shot clock. Perth just mishandling the rebound as Clark takes a break. Expect some sort of little big action here and something diving at the rim perhaps. Someone's got to shoot it on the touch. To the hot hand, Cox with low clock. Not quite. So here's Young. Scherth. There with the screen, Burrows. Hesitates, the floater, no good. So missed opportunity for Perth. Reed 
Once again, shouldering a heavy load this evening, Woods. Foul call on Burrows. Reed will inbound with 14 on the shot clock. Inbounds to Cox. Woods driving on Young, drawing contact. Was that before the shot? I think they called it just before. Yeah, hand on a hip early, I think. In fact, it looks like she's lining up for three throws. There's those stats on the screen for Courtney Woods once again. Playing well in the starting lineup. She's just such a good finisher. And second missed three throw uncharacteristically. Gets the second one to drop. We see Towns will extend their defensive pressure here off the back of that free throw. Burrows got Cox right there. Mabry back out there as well. Young. Now Scherf inside. Misses on the lay-in. Burrows wide open from the top. Rattles out. McSpadden pulls it down. Bodies diving everywhere. Jump ball. Great intensity from both, both teams there. Desperate for the ball on those possession plays. Perth crashing the glass there. Six offensive rebounds already. Just the grip defensively for the Townsville fight. You know, Steph Reed was caught under underneath with a, a catch coming into the six foot five Scherf. Reed's got to be about five foot five, but played smart. You know, played small, went after the ball. As we see McSpadden in that hustle, all bodies on. Great to see the sweepers getting a workout this evening. That they are. So Mabry to work it in for Perth. Now Young. On Cox, into the paint, little short. Again, nothing easy for Perth. Cox defended that exceptionally well. Had to negotiate a couple of staggered screens, then kept her body in front and made Young should pull up Jay over the hand as Cox from the corner hits her second for the night. Cox has popped up again. Up to nine points now for Townsville. And this Townsville fire team playing with confidence. Their shots are dropping. They're executing well. They've got great defensive intensity. As we see Mia Murray get into the lane for a steal. She's got to slow it up. Mabry's ahead. Burrows gets a hand in. Reed corrals it. So they get out of jail there. The fire. Woods will stop and pop. Young. Cox ahead of her. Gets into her mid-range. Jay. And you know what happens next. She's, she is tough to defend. I mean, that mid-range jumper she has, she leans off it. She can shake you a little bit before she launches. But, boy, that's tough to guard. I mean, Cox did a great job on the, on the one prior, but that one, my gosh, she's just so athletic. So timeout on the floor, three-point ball game. Townsville fire 37, Perth 34. And, really, Townsville... Well in this ball game, to say the least, they have looked up to their eyeballs in it, really. Absolutely. I mean, th this looks like, you know, it, it's it's got its screams of finals intensity. It's got great D, people making big shots at low clock, inside action, outside action, one-on-one -on -one contests. I mean, it's got all the, you know, it's got counter-attack. The, the Townsville Fire have been, you know, punishing Perth Lynx on the ball screen. Maybe we'll see some adjustment there, but this is, this is, a, this is a ball game. Is it ever Shannon Seabom? Chatting things over with his players. Steph Reed leading the way with 10 points and five assists. Woods with nine. And we've spoken a lot about the youngsters for Townsville. Well, Michaela Cox as well is having herself a game. Nine points and two triples as well. Yeah, she, look, I think the, the defensive job that she's also doing on Young, she's making Young work for it. Um, you know, similarly, I think Steph Reed's defensive effort up the floor on their, either on their Young guards or, or their vets has been huge. I think... You know, they've got fresher legs, even though they're a depleted side. They haven't had the, the schedule that the Perth Lynx have, and I think that's having an impact here. So here we go. Two minutes remaining. 
less than, in fact, in the first half. Fire crowd, rowdy as always. Murray to inbound. Reed, turnover, good defense, Perth and Young. So they look to remain pressed up, the Lynx. Another turnover, this time Young picks it off. Backs it out to Whitcomb. Garvin, so now they'll get a set here, the Lynx. Scherf, Mabry, contested three, not that time. Got out of jail on that one. That you know, two turnovers off the press that hurts for Townsville Fire. Perhaps they need a different inbounder. They had the young with Spadden at post inbounding against that pressure. Hands it back to Reed. Luckily, only conceded on one of those turnovers. Two Perth defenders there, and it's the call here from the referee. Like a reach in foul. I thought it was verging on a three second call for Steph Reed almost there, but. She's come away with it with a, a foul call, base out of bounds for Townsville Fire. So one last chance to extend that lead going into the main break. Cox. She's been on early, Akuzo with the screen. Has to opt it over to Akuzo and turnover. Jackie Young in safe hands of your Perth, opts it out to Garvin. Now Garvin wide open from the corner, a little strong. So that will do it for the first half. The Townsville Fire leaders by a solitary point. 37, they lead the Perth Lynx 36. And what was a really fun and exciting second quarter of action? Yeah, it was, Liam. I mean, you know, defense at both ends going, the intensity on possession plays. Teams, players coming up with big shots one-on-one. -on -one. Then great defensive that's that's forcing you know contested shots that aren't dropping. I mean this is this is finals kind of basketball. Even though you've got a depleted Townsville Fire that aren't in the finals mix. Certainly, of course, the Fire, a team that pre-season probably thought they were right in the thick of the finals race. Few injuries, few things haven't gone their way. It hasn't turned out that way. But gee, they're playing like it today. Marina Mabry having herself a little bit more of a lively game after a quieter game Wednesday night. Six points to her name. We'll get the highlights on your screen in a moment. Lead is for both teams. Whitcomb with nine, and it's Steph Reed with ten as well. Here we go. And what stood out to you most about the way the guards have played today for the fire carry? Look, I think, as we just see there, Steph Reed, their ability to play poised off that ball screen action, a couple of cheek baskets on the break as we saw that touchdown play to, uh, to Cox. And we saw some nice one-on-one -on -one action early from the post. You know, we saw that early, didn't, didn't come back. But this sort of play from the, the perimeter players of Perth, the ability to step back, play off the dribble, shoot the three. You know, I think this is what kept the Lynx in it at times. They got a, a few steals, got away early. Great little slip and, and then a score off that ball screen action. Cox on that buzzer. That was a great moment from the first half and Wickham straight away down the other end. And I think that's what's been great about this game. There'll be, you know, Young hits that one over Cox, but a minute before she missed a similar shot with tight D. So I think we're seeing that. We're seeing great one-on-one -on -one contests at both ends of the floor. Some really strategic tactical stuff on the ball screen action and we've got a one-point ball game. Should be good. The field goal percentage favouring the fire at the moment. They've been shooting the lights out from two. 59% from two so far in this one. And 10 steals as well for the Perth Lynx. So the fire lead by one point here. Stick around. We'll be back in five to ten minutes time for the second half of this one. The fire 37 lead the Lynx 36. Townsville, North Queensland is the perfect place to live, invest, work and play. Townsville is Australia's largest garrison city, the events hub of Northern Australia, home to major industry and a bustling global port. Townsville has a diverse economy, boasting world-class expertise in tropical health and sustainability, with major tertiary hospitals, universities and research facilities. Your next opportunity awaits. This is Townsville.
Welcome back to Townsville Stadium. It's the fire leading by a point here. Liam Ellison alongside Carrie Graff. And of course, Spalding believe everyone should have the opportunity to play basketball. Grab yourself a ball and get started today at spalding.com.au. Of course, Spalding are the official ball partner of the WNBL. It's been a fun first half, Carrie Graff. And look, the fire, they've been playing their starters pretty hard. They have. I mean, look, I think def their defensive intensity has really set this up for them. They're shooting the ball exceptionally well, which they sort of they haven't been doing um, the, their last few games. So they're right in this one. And look, you know, we've. I think we, we're going to see. This is to me. This is going to go all the way down the wire. What we're seeing in this first half, I think we're gonna, we've got more to come in the second. It'll be interesting to see. We see some change up defensively from the Perth Lynx. How they defend. How they defend that ball screen action that's been punishing them. Um, and can either team lined up from the three-point line? We haven't really seen anyone lighted up from the three-point line yet, and we know that Perth have the potential to do that with two, three, four athletes. I certainly do. And do you think fatigue as well could play a factor down the stretch for both teams? I do. I, look, I think in particular for Perth, just the schedule they've had, we saw Coach Petrick throw some of his young players in early in, early in this game. I think to make sure he's got you know the legs for his, his starting crew down the stretch. You know, Townsville at home, Townsville fans are, you know, fantastic for jumping on, on their teams back, particularly when it's close like this. So I think absolutely fatigue. You know, we see that. Does it, you know, take off a, an edge in someone's elevation in their jumper? Does their three ball fall a little bit short? And Townsville have been applying super pressure, and that wears you down. So I think no, there's no question it's going to be a, a factor, certainly for this Perth Lynx team come down the stretch. Maybury defending Reed to start us off. Woods hands it over to Cox. Bakuzo with the screen. Here's Reed again into the painted area. Murray steps it out. And Scherf taps it over to Young. Good offense by Townsville. Well executed ball screen. Kick it out to the veteran Mia Murray, who's a super three point shooter. Good hands defensively by Woods to shake that one loose. Hands it over to Reed. So she directs traffic for her team. Here's Murray, the veteran. Akuzo, hand off to Cox. Lively first half for her, as it was for this woman off the window, rattles out. Unlucky for Townsville. Scherf hands it off to Young. Now Whitcomb calls for it. Scherf cutting to the hoop. Met by three Townsville defenders. Garvin's got time to set herself. Akuzo battles hard. Great packing D by Townsville. They just made that tough for Scherf. Three players collapsed on as you see Reed get in the lane deep. Backs it out to Woods. Thought about the triple. Faked out two defenders. She makes it look easy and she's playing super athletic people. She just broke them down. Look at this. Got Scherf and then Whitcomb. Again, she just plays at the right tempo. She gets people in the air with the pace she plays at. She goes slow to fast. It's been great to watch so far this evening. Garvin having a conference with the referee. Making friends with the ref referee, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, we've seen Garvin open a couple of times in the, in the corner for that three ball. She's a very good three-point shooter, I think. Shooting 40% on the season. Traditionally for the bigs, it's, you know, they're pick and pop that or their trail threes. That corner three is an interesting one for, for bigs in my mind. It's not somewhere they spend a lot of time shooting that three ball. Mm. Very good point. She really is having a career year from beyond the arc. Garvin, 41%, as you said, Carrie. One of the top three-point shooters in the league is Young. Now she makes her move. Garvin and draws contact. I don't think the Townsville Fire crowd liked that call. <laughs> nice move by Garvin. Little little fake into the lane. Well, not a lot they can do about it. She's off to the charity stripe. Just the two points so far this evening for Garvin. So 11 a game and five and a half boards this season for Darcy Garvin. Yeah, her numbers down a little bit on her previous season with, you know, with Townsville. You know, she's come into a group with, you know, exceptional perimeter play. Sometimes takes a little while to adjust to a new group. Would save one there for Townsville. 
Scherf was there on the O glass, and now Mabry will be assessed with a personal. Second for her. Here's Cox. Woods, Akuzo there with the screen. Hesitates. Looking for a teammate, can't find it. Steps through on Mabry and Scherf's there. Smart play by Townsville too. You know, Mabry picks up her second. They bring Woods up to the top, get her isolated, get her work off the ball screen. And you could see it, you know, diving, weaving, ducking, trying to trying to get that cheap third foul on Mabry. Really smart strategically from the Townsville fire team. So another opportunity for Townsville. Ill-advised turnover from the Lynx. Cox. Woods again, this time working on Whitcomb. Trying to fight through and she'll head to the three throw line. Eleven points, seven boards, couple of steals as well for Woods. Again, great composure. Hasn't hasn't shot the free throw well tonight. Let's see if she can convert here. A couple of big free throws for them. Yeah, one of three this evening. And again, another miss. Second one falls home. Extended pressure by the Townsville Fire after the free throws. Young, there with Murray. That one can't fall, and Woods looks to be fouled on the way up. That'll be on a classy garden. Clearly a foul. Referees were right there on that one. As we see, those floor wipers getting a, more of a workout. Yeah. <laughs> Referee inspecting the work, and we're good to go. Wickham right there with Reed. Bounce pass to Wakuzo, tough to handle. Unforced error from the fire. His Scherf got the mismatch. Makes him pay. Reed hesitates on Young. Now she gets her floater up and off the window. She's been impressive getting deep in the lane there. There was a, a subtle change on the ball screen as we see launched by Mabry from three-point land. Akuso with the big defensive board. Skying for that rebound. Off the foot of the Perth defender. Perth's extended defence is causing Townsville Fire a little, a little bit of problem here. That, you know, it, it's not overly intense, but it's making him second guess and think. We saw, you know, second guess. Do I bounce pass it? Do I chest pass it? It's, um, you know, it's doing its job right now. It's, it's putting him on the back foot, making him question what's going on, and they've coughed the ball up a few times. Yeah, we saw it at the end of the first half as well. Mabry four steals. Jackie Young three of them as well. So once again, we'll get the sweepers out here. Really are the busiest, busiest workers in Townsville tonight. They can get a job on the Townsville Fires defense event. <laughs> <laughs> so another interesting point of this game so far is they're only playing seven players at the moment, the Fire. They've got eight available. So they've really been pressed in through all their injuries. We know that it's six games in 11 days for Perth, but you wonder if the Fire as well will have some fatigue issues as we have a turnover on the floor. Yeah, there's no doubt, Liam. You're, you're absolutely right. Seven plays. We're going to see a lot of plays on both teams play 35-plus minutes tonight. You know, it's that, as Townsville are depleted, they get, they're get they forced to do that. And, and, you know, clearly you want to play your development plays a little bit, but they're in, it. They're in with a shot with this game. They're, they're going to hang tough. And, look, players get fatigued, and that's where we might see some of that decision-making. The turnovers happen a little loose at the end, but... Um, they'll suck it up and, you know, the best players are fit and conditioned, they'll find a way. There's that young fast break laying again. And we just spoke about the turnovers once again, pushing up and turning defence into offence there for Perth. Leaders for both teams. Well, the Fire have got two players in double digits, Reed and Woods with 12 apiece. 
And for the Perth Lynx, it's still Sammy Whitcomb leading the way with nine points. Ryan Petrick chatting things over. Fire remain one point in the lead here. They've lost five in a row, the Fire. Undermanned against the ladder leaders, and they've looked up to the challenge so far. Yeah, they have. You know, it'll be, can they can they maintain the defensive pressure? I think that's going to be key for them. They, you know, Perth certainly can feel that, feel that heat. They're not getting open looks other than when they steal it, as we see Perth extend their pressure with a full court press and trap. This time they see their way out of it. Reed doubled, and there's another turnover. This time Whitcomb picks it off. Mabry driving on Murray, who hits the deck. Call here from the referee. Blocking foul will be on Murray. Yeah, Townsville have got to find an answer to break that pressure. It's, it's hurting them at the moment. Fortunately for them, Perth haven't been able to convert at the other end. And these players just got to stop hitting a deck tonight, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> they do. I think we're going to have to call those floor, floor wipers the sixth man for the, <laughs> for the Townsville fire, or for both teams. Yes. Mabry to inbound. Scherf, handoff. Mabry spinning, working inside. Scherf on the O glass. Now Garvin, wide open from the top. This time she drains it. That's her spot. You know, that, that's traditionally where post players like to shoot the three from the top of the arc there. She nailed that one. Back of the iron, dropped in. And Perth regain the lead for the first time since the first quarter. Reed. Pairing there with the Kuzo and Garvin. So the turnovers are mounting up for Townsville. Young inside, no good. Garvin crashing the glass. This time she battles inside. Murray's there. Townsville see one off. Good composure by Steph Reed just to pull it out here, make sure they get a good execution again. Now she works inside the painted area. Cox can fire. Little short. Feels Perth have got the momentum, even though it's only a two-point ball game here. Perth have really got some momentum here. Danger, danger time the next 30 seconds, 30 to 60 seconds as Mabry launches and strokes the three. Certainly does feel like the momentum is going the way the links carry. Wouldn't be surprised to see Coach Seabon pull a timeout here. You don't want Perth to get too much of a buffer. If you don't score on this one, we might see him pull the trigger on that timeout. Reed. You do hear the steady her team mid range. Jay once again drops for Steph Reed. Leading scorer in the ball game, 7 and 15 shooting, 14 points. Turnover. Again, that fatigue, Liam, that we've talked about, it's, it's impacting people's passability, what they're thinking is open that actually isn't hurting both teams. Cox over to Murray. Now inside to Akuzo, Scherf defending her. Whips it over to Woods. This handles it temporarily and it costs them Murray last touch. So a couple of substitutions as Young adjusts her shoelace. Mabry takes a break. Whitcomb and Reed. Garvin, hand off to Young. Garvin steps it out, back to back triples for Darcy Garvin. Whoa. I mean, we saw a lot of packed defense in by Townsville, collapsed in to try and not, not let anyone get by him, and they spit it out to Garvin, who strokes her second from the arc. Just starting to get those three pointers to drop now. The Lynx now 38%. Inboards to McSpadden. Got Eisenbarger defending her. Steps through, missing. 
Eisenbarger searching for a teammate. Finds the hot hand and Garvin. Now Young. Young got the mismatch on Murray. Backs it out to Sharp. And Woods does really well. Forces the jump ball. Tough stuff. Stopped by Townsville then, you know, a score for Perth. That could have really broken this one wide open. Like we said, the momentum certainly sitting with Perth. They're only six up, but score on this one could make it interesting. 14 to seven, they lead the period, the Lynx. So Sharp will inbound. Now she finds Whitcomb. Reed defending her, picks up her dribble. Oh, Sharp finds her, but they run out of time. Good effort from Whitcomb. Was to find that little back cutting, almost an alley oop. Um, tough defense, though. Steph Reed pressure on that pass just had the impact. So now Reed with the rock. Over to Murray. They get it over. Once again, they push up and Woods wide open, makes him pay. Wow, they needed that one. Big corner three by Courtney Woods. It's been Reed and Woods, the backcourt pairing, who've put up now 29 points combined for Townsville. Garvin dribbles off her foot. Defensive pressure by Townsville again. You know, that combination, defensive pressure at both ends, the, we see the extended pressure by Perth, the quarter court one on one pressure from Townsville, creating turnovers. And look to do the same. Murray ahead to McSpadden. Cox will slow it down to Reed. Directing traffic for Townsville. Woods hands it straight back. Now she drives on Garvin off the window for two. She is so effective. Absolutely poised, found the body, put a shoulder into the body of Garvin, took away the length of that potential shot block. As you see, Young rise up for a preferred mid-range jumper, not to go for her. Townsville did just enough there defensively, McSpadden that time. And Woods, 6-9 shooting, 17 points. Ever efficient, as you said, Carry. Here she is again, ball in hand, working on Eisenbarger. Eisenbarger got it that time. Townsville will remain in possession. This game's got a bit of everything. We've, we saw a little momentum swing. It didn't quite break out for Perth. Townsville chip it back. You know, we got people making big plays at one end. You got three point shots lighting up. You got scrappy, tough defense forcing turnovers. Reed. Now she gets her shot away. Eisenbarger there on the defensive rebound. And this Townsville Stadium, well, it's a tough place to play. McSpadden on the glass. Burrows back out there for Perth. Maybrew doing her best to deny Woods. Effectively so far. Reed. McSpadden provides the screen. Now she can whip it out. Murray for the triple. She's fouled. So three shots coming up. Here's that call again. Just didn't allow the landing by the looks. Yeah, young Eisenbauer, you know, good closeout. Closing out hard to the three-point shooter in, in Murray, but just couldn't control her body at the end of that play. Big free throws for Mia Murray. Chance to take back the lead as the third quarter winds down. A little bit long on that one. Two more to come for Murray. Too many rebounders for Perth. That one goes. First points of the night for Murray. So the fire and Mia Murray retake the lead here. Reed right up in Burroughs' grill. 
Forced to pick up her dribble. Hands it over to her big and Scherf. Screen for Mabry. He'll fire from mid-range. Drains it. Tough shot under duress. Some great pressure from Steph Reed on the guard, but the ball gets to Mabry, and it's the big players that come up with big plays. And she certainly did that. Now four players even with nine apiece for Perth. Leading scorers, Mabry, one of them. Reed, oh, just getting in there with the steal is Alex Sharp, who waltz in for two. Big steal, Alex Sharp. There's been a few steals for the Perth Lynx, turning defense into offense. 15 as a team. Reed. Now she goes to her left. Ah, uh ah, -uh, says Lauren Scherf. Six point seven seconds for Townsville Fire to execute and get a score off this base out of bounds. As we see Steph Reed go into the lane, nice block by Scherf. Seven seconds to work with Reed. Tries to win bounds and last touch by Woods. So they'll remain pressed right up the fire. Perth with the last say here in the third. Young. Danger. Mabry, deep triple, little strong. So that will do it for the end of three. We've got a ball game. The Perth Lynx 54 lead the Townsville Fire 51. Welcome back to Townsville Stadium. The Lynx leading here by three points. Liam Ellison here alongside Carrie Graff. And if you like what you've seen tonight, don't forget about Aussie Hoops. Of course, Aussie Hoop centres can be found across Australia. AussieHoops.basketball slash find a program. It's delivered in primary schools throughout Australia and is the most popular team sport involved in the sporting schools program. Aussie Hoops promotes enjoying a healthy and active lifestyle and fosters strong and vibrant local communities get involved today link on your screen so 10 minutes of action remaining here at carry graph and it has been a fun one so far so far through three yeah it, it absolutely has i mean look we're getting everything momentum swings little leads by the fire then now um uh now the links with the lead players making big shots you know probably too many turnovers for the likings of most coaches and i think that's that was probably the difference in that in that third quarter, you know, Townsville have come up, have got 18 turnovers, and Perth, 19 points from turnovers. I mean, take half of those away, and Townsville is sitting with a nice little buffer of a lead, but um, this is finals kind of basketball. Love the desperation from both teams, the possession play, um, the poise and attack from, from Reed and, and Woods, and then the big time players from Townsville coming up with some big shots. Here we go, 10 minutes to go. Perth need to win to remain in the top two. Reed from the elbow starts things off for Townsville. She's been super at that tonight. Coming off that ball screen, getting that little mid-range jumper, snaking her dribble in. Mabry. Mid-range two. Murray with a defensive rebound. Reed has been great. 16 points. Seven dimes. Here's Woods. 
Reed around the strong Akuzo screen. Hesitates, tries to reward her big, and Mabry taps it out. Now she's off. Gets around Murray. Count the bucket. Marina Mabry's back. Big play, you know, that's what that's what the best players do. We see Mabry here knife through those two defenders, find a finish, take the foul, go to the free throw line. That's what you need your star players to do in tight games. Can they make three-point plays? And she certainly certainly showed that she can and does. Doesn't look like that foot injury is giving her too much trouble. Leading score off of Perth now, 13. Yeah, it could be dangerous down the stretch. If, if Mabry gets going for this team. Absolutely. Averaging 22 a game, I believe. So she could be on target for that if she gets going here. Second in the league, I believe. Behind only Annalie Maley as the three throw drops. So Reed assesses Mabry again. Six steals to her name. Tries to add another. Burrows defending Reed. Woods spinning. So draws contact, baseline ball. Here it is again, looks to be on Scherf. She just doesn't look flustered when she gets in the lane. She's in immense traffic. She's got three people on her, keeps her head, finds a foul or finds a way to get a shot up. Super impressive mm. being Courtney Woods tonight. Of course, if you just joined us, she came into this game averaging 20 points per game over the last three since entering the starting lineup and continuing that trend here tonight. Reed. In and out, finds a teammate up top and Woods. Mabry right there on the D, stepping through and no good. So Perth with the defense. Wickham bounces ahead to Burrows. Through the legs of Reed, and again, bodies hit the deck. Goes the way of the fire. Great D by Steph Reed. Excellent pressure on the young Burrows. Gets her hands in. Perhaps unlucky the young kid Burrows not to get a foul call on Reed first. Yeah. Nonetheless, Townsville come up with the stop. And there they are again, the sixth man for the game tonight. <laughs> the floor sweepers. Shout out. They've had their work cut out, that's for sure. And a sponsor slapped on those floor sweepers. You'd be getting your money's worth of a sponsorship tonight. <laughs> Here's Mia Murray. Reed. Murray hands off to Cox. Lively in the first half. Akuzo there, screen on Burrows, and fouled on the elbow jumper. Burrows can't believe that one. She thought it was all ball. The young player doesn't often show that reaction if it wasn't. Can't believe it. Tough to tell on that angle, but you're right. It was a look of indignation. That it was. The Townsville boys there on screen look like they're having a good night out. And they brought the heat, this Townsville crowd, getting behind their fire. I don't want to curse her, but she's a 90% free throw shooter. This has got to be money for, for Steph Reed. There it is. Ever reliable. Second one goes, shot's true. She's been huge for them tonight. Getting the lane, controlling tempo, pressure D. She's all over the floor, coming up with steals. Has she ever? Talk about taking her opportunities. She's young. Akuzo, good contest, and no, maybe a foul call from the referee. Wow. Coach Seabom looks a little flabbergasted. Maybe she did come in with the hand. I mean, she had good body position, hands up, but just a little bit of temptation at the end there to bring that hand in. As we see Jackie Young at the free throw line. Hasn't had a great night out in, in, in her terms, in terms of her, her field goal percentage. Yeah. Had lots of pull-up jumpers, but I've got to say, Townsville done a pretty good job. You know, 
contested most. She's had a hand on hand on most. And again, we talk about that. You know, six games in 11 days. That's got to have an impact on this this group. And she's been balling over her last five as well, averaging over 20 a game. But you're right, that condensed schedule. Makuzo. They come with a double. They get out of it here. Cox in the corner. Murray. So Perth recover. Surprised Murray didn't launch that one. She is. Yeah. And she's not shooting three point, three point as great as she had across her career this this season. But you know, if you're a three point shooter, you're a three point shooter in my mind. Mm. Take that shot wide open. But then again, she's a vet. She knows her team. She knows that Reed's had the hot hand. Courtney Woods has a hot hot hand unselfishly gives it back to the point guard to say, hey, let's see if you can go to work again. So 14 to work with for Reed in the fire. Cox. Whitcomb defending her. Now she drives baseline, needs some assistance. Tried to hand it to Akuzo. Young now. Scherf rolling to the bucket. Waves it off. Here's Garvin. Mabry, way too much space. Can't convert. So it'll stay with Perth. See who the foul call is on. Steph Reed, I think. Wow. Here's the replay. Oh, yeah, look, maybe they said she's got underneath Scherf's body there. She's, you know, playing as young as, as small players do. Liam, you might know a little bit about that. <laughs> Getting underneath the big, you're giving up. You know, she's probably giving up six, eight inches to to um, to Lauren Scherf and sort of got under her body. So probably not a bad call from the referees. They're in a much better position than we are, certainly. Yeah, battling hard on the box out, but the Lynx, another opportunity. Scherf, here's Mabry. She's becoming an issue in a hurry for Townsville. Cox whips it back over to Scherf. Garvin's got to go. Three ball, a little strong, but young. Another chance. Excellent ball movement by the Lynx to work the ball through hands, find a wide open Garvin who couldn't make it, but Mabry says, I can. What a shot from Marina Mabry. Wow. Low, low clock, off the left hand, little stab dribble, hand in her face, boom. And that's what she does. <laughs> she does, and does it well. Up to 17, two triples in the game. Second game back into the starting lineup for Mabry, working her way back from that foot injury. Momentum right here with Perth. We'll probably see a bit of extended defense here. That's, I oh know, we've got Mia Murray at the line. Technical three throw? Perhaps. So I missed that one of the box, but Murray gets it to go. Back to a five-point ball game. Approaching crunch time here at Townsville Stadium. Perth have just grinded out this five-point lead in the second half. Woods. Back over to Reed. She goes baseline, whips it out to Michaela Cox. Timely. Oh, what a game have we got going on here. What a game indeed. Two-point ball game. Mabry hands it over to Young. The preferred mid-range and Scherf with the front position. Now Wickham can step out. 4-3. Classy Sammy Wickham. She is. And, and look, th this is a three-point shooter. Watch her. Check the line. I'll just make sure I step back outside the three. Why would I take a two when I can get a three? and nudge that lead a little further for my team. But that, she's all-class Sammy Whitcomb and just a pure, pure shooter. Huge shot from her. Back out to five for Perth. Six minutes to go. A long, long time in the context of this game. Garvin trying to follow Murray into the corner. Not that time. Mabry's one to watch here in the fourth. Now she makes her move in the paint. Oh, by Akuzo. Sends it back. Townsville crowd loves it. Reed, transition three, goes up. 
just missing. That would have blown the roof off this stadium yeah. had Steph Reed knocked that one. As Akuso said, not in our house at the other end. Reed couldn't convert the three as we see Perth links with Garvin in the corner for three, not to be. Wickham on the O-glass. Friday night hoops in Townsville. It's exciting stuff. Scherf and Akuso. Long hook shot is off. Tough D by Akuso. Chested up her man. Gave Scherf nowhere to go except the step back leaner that wasn't anywhere near it. So now they look to trim that gap in the fire. Reed driving inside on Whitcomb and picked off by Young. And she's off. Got Cox ahead of her. Takes the two on the fast break. So time out on the floor and the Lynx now out to a seven point lead. Momentum time out here for Coach Seabom. He, you know, sensed that. And we've seen some tired bodies here. You know, Kuso could barely get herself down the floor then. That's, that's the one area that Steph Reed's got into a little bit of trouble tonight when she's got deep in the lane and then spat it out. We, we've seen the uh, the Perth links in the, in the lanes and come up with steals just like that one that Jackie Young picked off. Big moment as well. We saw the Akuzo block, and if that Reed three had a fall, and it would have been game on. Absolute pandemonium with the crowd here in Townsville. But Young picks it off, and now Perth have opened up their biggest lead of the game. Yeah, they have. And this is where it can be dangerous, you know. I mean, big big set coming up for here for Townsville out of this timeout. They need to execute and get a, get a big score. And they've really got to look after the ball. I mean, the, the turnovers is a killer for them tonight. 21 turnovers. And, I mean, look. You've got to credit that to Perth too. Perth's defence, they're, they're playing in smart, you know, packed defence and in the lane when, and they collapse when uh, when the Townsville fire get deep in the lane. But that 21 turnovers is, is hurting them. They've got to really tidy that up for these last few minutes to make sure they're not giving the Perth Lynx cheap buckets off those steals. Yeah, when you turn the ball over 21 times, well, the Lynx have capitalised for 27 points off turnovers. Really starts to write the story. Young, six steals. Mabry, six steals. See the extended pressure here again from the Perth Lynx that's caused the fire a lot of problems tonight. They looked to double-team the ball handler, Reed, early. Get the ball in someone else's hands. But good composure this time shown by the Townsville fire. As Cox looks to get it back to their point guard. Can't do. Gets, a hand, gets in the handoff action with Akuso. Out to Murray. She'll step out for three. Just short. She's had some good looks, Mia Murray. Short arm, most of them so far. And it just hasn't been her night shooting from the field. So far, at least, here's Young. Hands it back to Young. Doesn't look to contest, and they come up with the stop. Kuso's been big down this end. You know, a couple of big defensive boards, a nice block and check on, on Scherf earlier. Yeah. She has, here she is on cue, hands it off to Woods, back to Akuzo. now on the offensive end. Nice little finish. Back to five. Chance of defense from the crowd, Young. Wickham thought about the triple. Now Garvin in the corner, no hesitation, not that time. Nice block out and deboard by Woods then, she had it. Alex Sharp, the offensive rebound specialist on her back. As we saw Garvin miss that corner three. It hasn't been her night from the corner, but it certainly has from the top of the arc. Now got a double-double as well, Woods. Ten boards. Not bad for a two-guard. Here's Reed. Now she gets the left-hand hook up. Shot clock buzzer goes. Perth with a stop. Three minutes to go here. Seen some tired bodies here. The bigs will see Scherf and Akuso sucking in the big ones at the top of the D there. New hands on hips from both teams. Wickham working. Find Sharp in the corner. Three balls off. And it's Scherf comes up with it and run out of time. So big stop for Townsville. Just got out of jail. They, that they did. That, that could have been scary for them there. But luckily the clock was the shot clock was on their side. Really important they get a good a good look on this offensive set just to keep their heads in it, keep their confidence going. Perth, it just feels like they're about to break away, but here we are, Townsville, with a chance to make it a one possession ball game. Reed. 
I'd like to see the ball back in Courtney Woods' hands, see if she can get it on the deck, make something happen. Or Akuso with an elbow, catch and shoot. Can't get that one to go. Big defensive stop this one here for the Townsville Fire. Can they keep the, the Perth Lynx locked up, keep the pressure on their shooters? This lady's dangerous, Mabry. Working inside on Woods. Play on, she follows her own miss, and now she's fouled. Hustle from Mabry is rewarded. Yeah, clearly a foul there by Woods. Hands in. So, Mabry will take... In fact, we've got a timeout on the floor. Sweepers once again back at it. But Perth, five-point leaders. Tired bodies for both teams, as we said, Carrie. What do the fire need to do to close this gap with two minutes on the clock? Well, I think they've been struggled to score the last few, few times down the floor. The biggest thing that we've said, okay, they can't turn the ball over. I think sometimes when they're getting... Steph Reed in particular is getting too deep in the lane. Her passing lanes are, are shut off. She looked much better to me when she was coming off that ball screw and shooting the little mid-range shot. Like I said, I'd like to see the ball in... Um, in uh, Woods's hands a little bit more. See if she can put it on deck and get to the free throw line. Uh, they, you know, they haven't been shooting exceptionally well from three-point range. I think they need to, unless they're wide open, not, not look at that. But go back to what was working for. Let's see if they can get Woods on the on the dribble and get something something easy. But again, they've got to be conscious not to let any of those Perth shooters get, get off and going. They've done a great job, I think, on Young on making a shoot contested pull-up jump shots. Mabry's the key here. I think they need to keep the ball out of Mabry's hands. But... They're right in it. It's a you know, two-possession game, two minutes to play. As we know, that's, you know, two minutes feels like two years sometimes in basketball. There's a whole lot more basketball to go in this game tonight. Yes, absolutely. Young, 5 of 15 shooting. Maybury 5 of 14. So they've defended both pretty well, but even so, they've had their moments. maybury has been good. Now she's inbounding. 14 to work with for the Lynx. Find some space, mid-range, a little strong. Looks to be on Michaela Cox. Yeah, I think she hooked her on that block out. I mean, they're playing physically, you know, they're desperate here, but a little too much on that block out. She was mismatched. She's got to come up with something funky. So, Perth again with another chance. In fact, Garvin at the line. 4s home. Been relatively quiet tonight, Garvin, other than those two big sort of trail or pick and pop three balls that she hit. But, you know, that's the thing. Can you come up with big shots? Even if you're having a bit of a quiet night, can you come up with a big play when your team need it? Shirk with the O-glass and missing. So, again, the fire remain in it. Six points. Whitcomb right up there with Reed. Looking for some movement from her team. Now she finds Murray. He'll stop and fire. <laughs> Mia Murray hasn't been her night, but could it be her moment? Exactly right, Liam. I mean, you know, she hadn't, she hasn't been able to buy one from the three-point line. She comes up with that one just when her team needs it. That's what the veteran players do. That's what the big-time players do. Big shots at big moments for Murray. As we're speaking of big-time players, Mabry with the ball in her hands, with Woods on her tight. Can't get that one to go. Just dribbles the ball out of bounds. Can't believe it, Steph Reed. Again, that fatigue factor, I think it's really playing now. You know, that happens in, a, in another game at another moment. Steph Reed's got that ball in there. She's off to organise offence. Unfortunate for her, but three point ball game, minute 17 to play. This is what it's all about. 4.4 to work with. Wickham into Young. She stops and draws the foul. Michaela Cox will be assessed. That's her third personal. Costly error for the fire. So Young again to the three throw line. Both teams a little indifferent from the charity stripe tonight. Yeah, they have been. And again, you know, that, that word fatigue maybe has been a factor. Yeah. It's the first one drops. 
She's had to work for everything tonight, Young. You know, I mean, she's got 13 points, but boy, she hasn't had a whole lot easy other than a few on the break. But in the in the half court, she's been defended well. So now to win down to Reed. They remain pressed up the links. Ahead to Akuzo. Lead remains at five. Cox will fire. Little left. Woods follows the miss and draws contact. A little quick on the trigger on that one, I thought, for Cox. It was 13 on the shot clock, but she felt she ooh, was deep and contested with 13 on the shot clock. I'm not sure that that was the best take, but I'm not out there playing, and I haven't been fatigued for 38 minutes either. <laughs> and when you've got a player like Woods in there, scrapping around, coming up with a possession, you're, you're like, well, maybe that was an assist. Reed and Woods playing the full 40 minutes tonight. That's 18 points in the game for Woods. Two a two. So back to a three point ball game. Less than a minute to go here. Mabry trying to ice the game for her team. Young, Murray defending her. Garvin's got Cox down low. Here's Whitcomb, hands it off to Scherf. And two shots coming up for Lauren Scherf. The look on Scherf's face suggested that perhaps that mightn't have been a foul. Nice little slip, ball screen action. The look on Courtney Wood's face suggested she knew. So the cowbells ring. Townsville crowd do their best to put her off. They do. And it's worked. First one misses. 66-69. The score remains. Second one drops, and it's an important one. Into Reed. 40 seconds to go here. Huge possession here for the fire. They've got to convert this one. Reed over to Murray. He'll step back for another triple just off. And Garvin's fouled. Important stop for Perth. Might be the fourth on Woods. So we're headed up the other end. In the bonus, the Lynx. Murray trying to repeat her efforts from beyond the arc from moments ago. And look, in context, probably not a bad foul from, I mean, a good, good play from which she was trying to shake loose the steal. You know, probably, you know, getting the foul, it doesn't take any time off the clock. And first Puts the one on. misses, yeah. They have been missing their th three throws tonight as Garvin, 0 of 2, Akuzo on the defensive glass. Wickham's right there. It will be a foul call. Third personal on Whitcomb. Now the fire in the bonus. Yeah, clearly a foul. So here we go. Costly misses at the line from Perth. Kuzo to take the shots. Big shots for this young post with huge potential. Can she make clutch free throws? First one's good. 66% shooter on the season from the line. Two a two, so one possession ball game. Into Mabry, Reed's right there. Crosses up and draws the foul. Smart play by Mabry. Yeah, you know, exceptional use of body. And Townsville doing the right thing here. You know, they, they see if they could get a steal with, within a second or two, make something happen. But here's Mabry just goes, finds the body, leans that shoulder into the, the chest of Steph Reed to sucker the foul and get herself to the free throw line. Leading scorer tonight for Perth with 17. 
another miss from the line. Now eight of 15 Perth. Yeah, really poor free throw shooting and uncharacteristic. You know, they're a 70 percent plus free throw shooting team across the season. Second one drops. So timeout, 19 seconds to work with. It's a three-point ball game. What does Shannon Seabomb draw up here? Look, it, it's got to be, it's got to be Reed or Woods, doesn't it? I mean, that, that's who's been scoring tonight. I've got to say, he, he's doing something for Courtney Woods. Can can they get her a three-point look? If not, can she put the ball on the floor and get to the get to the lane? Having said that, do they, you know, did he diagram something out of some horns action and try and get, you know, Murray or Cox who did hit big three? Big three-point shots when they needed them, but I got to say, you go to you go at what's what's a guaranteed score or free throw opportunity, and I, I got to say that's Courtney Woods. But let's see what he's got. See if we can see his board. Plenty of three-point options on this Townsville team, and look, wouldn't be the first time we've seen overtime here in Townsville this season either. Yeah, it, I mean, wouldn't that be good? Although fatigue. I don't know. You got a few people in foul trouble. We've got Reed and Woods on four fouls. You know, interestingly. And that's where I think, you know, they could have gone with gone at Woods a little bit sooner. Mabry's been sitting on three fouls for quite a while. They haven't gone back at her to test it. But overtime would be intriguing for the, you know, the legs left in the athletes on the floor tonight. Certainly would. Townsville now effectively playing a six-player rotation. Fabro's seen just one minute of action. McSpadden 12 off the bench. So here we go. Cox will inbound. You know, and their play might be, if we've got the open three, take it. If not, put it on the deck, see if we can get to the rim. We'll foul again and send them to the line again. Into Murray, who straight away fires. Murray just rattles out. Akuzo's there to tip it, but last touch the fire. Second triple in a row for Murray that's been oh so close to falling. It looked good. It was straight, just a touch long. Oh, we'll see him here. They'll try and, you know, can they can they make a steal in the first second or two? And if not, try and foul. Foul immediately, get get the link straight to the line. And Wickham and Mabry waste no time. So back to the charity stripe. We've spoken of their struggles today, but Mabry normally a great free throw shooter. Yeah, like, as you say, 56% pretty lowly for a team of this calibre. But that, what, that's what happens when you're fatigued or a little pressure sets in. But I can't imagine Mabry won't make at least one of these. Certainly on the numbers tonight and certainly on what we saw on the free throw set previously. First one drops. Makes it difficult for Townsville. Good on the second. So they've got to go quick here, the fire. Any any shot that's good. A three or a two they'll take. Reed will take a two. Reverse laying off and Young pulls it down. So now they get the foul call. Five seconds, I think, remaining. Fifth foul on Steph Reed. So Jackie Young, four of five from the free throw line tonight. Reed with some applause from the home crowd. Hell of a game for her tonight. You know, probably faded a little down the down the stretch there in terms of her, her ability to score. A bit of adjustment defense from the Perth Lynx, but she was great tonight. 18-point ball game. Set the tone for them early. Pressure defense. She certainly was as young on the first. So this to put it out of reach. Jackie Young. Second one goes. Cox can heave if she wants, and that will do it. So the Perth Lynx, a professional win here at the Townsville Stadium. 75 to 68, they prevail, remaining on top of the WNBL table. And what a fun game of basketball, Carrie Graff. It was, it was great, Liam. I mean, we saw momentum swings, a great start by this depleted Townsville Fire team. You know, a fatigued Perth Lynx team that are on top of the table and and, and, and had big players come up with big shots. In fact, both teams did, but it was a seesawing affair. It had pressure, it had desperation, it had, you know, some clunky missed shots, but then we had some big shots at big big moments. But, you know, all credit to uh, the Perth Lynx to, to grit out that win, to, you know, get them one step, one game closer to securing top spot. Six games in 11 days for the Lynx. They battled hard to the very end, and 
for what was a, a relatively low scoring game, it didn't feel it. It was exciting all the way. There was big shots, as you said. Courtney Woods with 19 was the game's, or in fact, Townsville's leading scorer. In the end, it was Marina Mabry with 20 points. Who stood out to you tonight from either team? Carrie. Yeah, certainly the, the three you spoke about then. I, I think they were, the, they were the difference makers. Mabry, you know, we saw her break out at times and come up with some big plays, but yeah, I think Reed and Woods for, for Townsville um, and, and certainly Mabry. And then, you know, it, it was it was a battle. I, I think the, the, the thing I liked about it was the, the defensive intensity at both ends. I, I thought the, the pressure that the Perth Lynx applied in terms of their extended pressure really impacted the Townsville fire, and that was the difference maker for them. You know, 21 turnovers. That's kind of the ball game for them right there. I think Perth scored, you know, close to 25 points off turnovers. And that's, for a team, when you, when you hold a team like this to, to 75, you know, take 10 off those, you know, turnover points, you, you're right there. They certainly gave their fans something to cheer about tonight, the fire. They came out in force. They were loud. They were proud. And look, only seven or eight available players. They played a, a, basically a six-player rotation, fought hard to the very end with four starters out as well, the fire. So should commend their efforts. But Perth, they remain on top of the table. One game remaining for them against right here at this very venue against Townsville. They've got to win, you think, to wrap up top spot? They do. If they if they were to drop that Sunday and look, they're gonna be fatigued. I mean they've just they've had a battle like this against this team. Townsville are gonna to be just as fatigued. That one's gonna be really interesting. Um, you know, the games tomorrow are, are big, they're about final spots. You see Capitals versus the Melbourne Boomers. Yeah. You know, the winner of that one could, you know, top spots available if Perth were to drop the, the next one on Sunday and similarly Adelaide against Southside. You know, they're games that are gonna impact First, second, third, fourth. Huge, huge game, that one. The Boomers and the Caps, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Here's the stats on your screen right now. The Lynx, seven-point winners here tonight. The turnovers were an issue for the five. Pretty even elsewhere in the steals column as well. I mean, that just capitalises the defence to offence that we saw throughout. So here we go. The Lynx, 75. They've defeated the Townsville Fire, 68. Liam Ellison here alongside Carrie Graff. It's been a fun one tonight. Big, big day of hoops tomorrow here on KO, the ABC and Fox Sports. So make sure you catch that. That's all for tonight. It's the Perth Lynx by 7.